Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Tuesday, the 13th of July, 2021. I hope you're COVID-free. I hope you're healthy today. I hope all your needs are being met in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health and that of your family. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, seeking to save lives. Blessings upon those that clean up for us and pick up our garbage. Blessings for those. Blessings upon those that make deliveries for us. And double blessings on those trying to deliver boys and girls, men and women, children from sex slave, pedophilia, child pornography, human trafficking operations. Double blessings also upon those working for the homeless, trying to help the 600,000 plus men, women, children, and families living on the streets in the United States of America, millions around the world, and blessings upon them themselves for theirs is the kingdom. Today, I want to talk about are the New York Knicks opportunity with the Miami Heat. Pat Riley, Pat Riley, who used to coach the Knicks, in my estimation, is one of the greatest basketball minds in the history of the NBA. Uh, Obviously, he was a good player. He played in the NBA. He was a good college player, actually, All-American at Kentucky. And Of course, he was a great coach, five championships with the Lakers. What I liked about his Lakers teams um, is that, yes, they had Magic Johnson. Yes, they had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yes, they did have James Worthy. But it wasn't that easy because Kareem was past his prime, way past his prime. And what Pat Riley did, they started off, as you all know, with history, but uh, with what they call Showtime with Magic Johnson. They was running. Michael Cooper uh, was was on a wing. They had Norm Nixon, another guy that that was in the early championships they had. And they were running. They were running. They called them Showtime because they were you know they were a running team. But then he made adjustments as Kareem was older, and then they got James Worthy. They became a defensive team and more of a half court team. And Magic's three point shot evolved, and they and it became more of a half court team and they won championships. They won five in the (laughs) eighties. And then he goes to Miami and with a point guard named Dwayne Wade that nobody was going to draft as a point guard coming out of Marquette. Dwayne Wade was thought of as a shooting guard, you know, which you, you know, you kind of, but Pat Riley drafted him and turned him into a point guard. And, you know, they get again, again, an overweight out of shape past his prime uh, Shaquille O'Neal and they win another championship. (laughs) <laughs> and then since then, as an executive, he has won uh, three other championships. OK, so Pat Riley's a man. I mean, he really is sharp. He's a KGO dude. You got to be careful with him. Um, the summer of LeBron, when LeBron went there, nobody thought Miami had a chance to afford, um, you know, LeBron with Dwayne Wade and Chris Paul. He made the moves that summer using the rules of the NBA to create the space to get all three signed and convince them to take discounts, which is very rare in the NBA. Everybody thinks that some players are going to take a discount because they want to play with their hometown team. NBA players don't do that. I mean, even with the Miami Heat, the promise was they get paid more later. Well, LeBron knew he was going to get his, and he did. Bosh got his. Dwayne Wade was complaining because he took the cut and was wake, looking to make the money up, and, my, and then Pat Riley wasn't giving up the loop. That's when Dwayne Wade went and got twenty million from Chicago, and then came back to mine. See, so it wasn't even like it's not like players want to do that. They don't be giving up that money like that because this is in the NBA. Even though we, we as regular people, we understand that's more money than we'll ever see in our lives one one year their salary, but they only get a limited time to get that. And so they don't want to give up any dime at any time. They want to take, they're not taking no shorts. They want to get that money when they're going to get it because it's a limited time for them to get that kind of money. So he got them to take discounts to join Miami and win championships. And so, um, and, and he delivered in that promise. They won, you know, two championships there. So, um, that was, that's Pat Riley. So here, what we're dealing with here. So, you got to be careful with him because <laughs> he's slick. So the Miami situation is this. They have uh, team options 
on both uh, Goran Dragic and Andre Iguodala. Uh, Goran Dragic's team option is 19 million. Um, Andre's is 15 million. Okay. They're probably not going to exercise those options. Okay. Um, they locked up Bam out of body. And this is the first year of his mega deal that he signed a five year deal in the $150 million range, $170 million range. And he's going to get 28 million this year. They already got, as you know, they got Jimmy Butler and he's 31 million this year. So <clears throat> they traded Kelly Olynyk to take a chance on Victor Oladipo. And Victor Oladipo got hurt again. He's going to miss this whole season. Same thigh injury that he had that initially, you know, messed him up. So I, I think Victor Oladipo is pretty much done. Maybe he comes back in 2022 um, as a bench piece for some team, but he's done. So he's off their books. So they have 20 million in cap space. They have 20 million in cap space. Now they have team option, not team options, qualifying offers to make for both Duncan Robinson and Kendrick Nunn. And therein lies the Knicks opportunity. You see, when you were a run, well run team, as the Knicks are now, and you create a situation where you have draft picks and cap space and a coaching staff and a front office and a great scouting team and you got some players. The Knicks are probably in the best position of any team in the NBA right now. In the totality of it. Leon Rose obviously gets a lot of credit. Um, you got to give credit to the owner, James Dolan. But you also got to give some credit to Steve Mills, who traded Christos Porzingis with um, Tim Hardaway Jr., right? And Chon um, what was the other guy's name? Oh, man, I remember. But there was another guy that he traded with him, created all that cap space that got Julius Randle in here. Okay? So... You know, and then never traded no picks. Now, this is the thing. A lot of y'all bring me scenarios where you're looking to trade picks. Y'all still thinking like crack babies. I'm greedy. I want to keep our picks and get players too. You see what I'm saying? I want to keep our picks and get players. Now, we got extra picks. Yes. But we not, you know, like we all agree. I think most of us agree. Julius Randle is a strong piece for a championship team. But he's not the main piece. So what you do in this scenario, you got to get an equivalent, which you can get of a Julius Randle, or you got to get a superstar. Now, there's not many superstars available right now, but you can get an equivalent or a couple of equivalents or a couple of pieces that are close to a Julius where you can put that all together and make a serious run. Okay. Plus, you still got your draft picks and you could always... Fine, you know, you never know. Somebody might pop and become the next Bam Matter by you, you know, the next Julius Randle, the next LeBron. You just never know what you're going to get in the draft. So, we're looking at Kendrick Nunn and Duncan Robinson. They have till August 1st to extend the qualifying office, which, okay, if you're Pat Riley, you got to assume he's not going to make a mistake here. So, the smartest thing for him to do is extend the qualifying offers of four point seven million to both of those guys, and then they're restricted free agents, and he has the right to match any offer that is offered to them, which he probably will. Where to now? <laughs> this could affect the situation with Kyle Lowry. We mentioned in another video, really and truly. For the money that Kyle Lowry wants and the years that he wants, there's only two teams. It's New York and Miami. That's it. I mean, there are Western Conference teams, but it, we're are going to assume that Kyle wants to compete for a championship. That he wants to he wants to go on a team that's going to be pushing for the Eastern Conference Finals or the Western Conference Finals competing for a championship. In the West, that's a little bit more difficult. So he could go sign with a team like a Memphis, you know, or somebody like that. But they're not in the West. The road to the championship is harder. Okay. 
It's not that easy. And then the teams that could make it easy, the two L.A. teams, ain't got no money. Okay? They don't have no money to be paying him $25 million a year. So it's to the East is the best path. It's the best path for him to make a championship. It's the best path for him to make an all-star team. You know, it's just the best path. So it's New York and Miami. Philly ain't got no money. So it's New York and Miami. So with the qualifying offer that Pat Riley will extend to Duncan Robinson and Kendrick Nunn, he's going to have decisions to make. Now, if I'm him, you got to think like him. If you had to choose between those two, you would choose Duncan Robinson. And the reason you would do that is because you still, you could re-sign Goran Dragic on a one-year deal. You could put Tyler Hero in the starting lineup, and they've done that. You could start him at, um, at the point guard. Because uh, in the interview, they, the Miami media, I, I listened to the interview where they, they directly asked him about Kendrick Nunn and Duncan Robinson. And he said Duncan Robinson can be considered one of the best shooters in the NBA. And he's right. See, some of y'all try to compare him to Reggie Bullock. I'm not saying Reggie Bullock's no scrub. But Duncan Robinson on another level in terms of shooting. He's on another level. Okay, he is top three in the NBA as far as shooters. And, and I say put him up there because like a Davis Bertans is a specialist. That's all he does is shoot. He can't move, can't play no defense, can't do nothing. Duncan Robinson plays defense. Okay, he's not a ball handler, but he plays defense and he can shoot the lights out. Okay, so Kendrick Nunn, on the other hand, what Pat Riley said is that he can do the floater. He's an offensive power, but he's not a playmaker. That's what he says. He's not a playmaker. Okay, and he's not. Uh, and he didn't mention anything about his defense. So I'm not saying Kendrick Nunn's a scrub on defense, but he doesn't play the level of defense that a Miami Heat like the Tibbs would require. But not good, not bad enough to keep him on the bench, though. You know, it's, it's, it's adequate. So, if you're Pat Riley, you're going to make sure you sign Duncan Robinson. If you're the New York Knicks, you got options. You can force his hand. And you can say, because they're talking about paying Duncan Robinson $15 million a year. But some people in the media say he can go up as high as is 20. As a matter of fact, he was mentioning something along the lines of what, and see, this is what NBA players do now. He was looking along the lines of what Breton signed for. Uh, he was looking for, he was looking at that. Breton signed an $80 million deal. Okay. And, uh, and then stuff, somebody like, uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, he's looking, he, the Bogdanovich signed a $70 million deal. Okay. And, and then of course there's Joe Harris, which signed a four year, $75 million deal. If I'm, Duncan Robinson's people. And I'm saying, I think my guy is better than all of them guys. And I, and I want, I want at least that money. So Duncan Robinson will probably be looking in the 18 to $20 million range. Now for the Knicks, this just adds another possibility on the wing. Cause Duncan Robinson's a wing. He could guard twos and threes. He's six, seven. So you got, now we talked about Norman Powell. We talked about Kelly Oubre Jr. Now we're talking about Duncan Robinson. So now we could, and that's not even including, we could, we could offer him 20 if we wanted to and still get a point guard like a Kyle Lowry. Cause we got that kind of leverage this year. Okay. Duncan Robinson is 27 years old. So a four year deal, you, you know, you're getting him in his prime through his prime. That's good. So I would force Pat Riley to have to pay him heavy money. I would force Pat Riley to use all his cap space to pay Duncan Robinson. Okay. So now if he matches, okay, he got no more cap space. He'll be over the cap to sign Kendrick Nunn. If he doesn't match, we get Duncan Robinson. And we could still go get Kyle out. Okay. That's scenario number one. Then there's Kendrick Nunn. Now, 
Kendrick Nunn, as we mentioned earlier, is not a playmaker, but he is a dynamic scorer. He's a real deal scorer. Playoffs and regular season. That being, he's also 26 years old. He's approaching his prime. He, we can get him for about 15 million. I'm thinking 15 a year. We could get Kendrick Nunn. Problem with Kendrick Nunn, aside from what I mentioned in terms of he's not the highest level defender. He's not the defender Kyle Lowry is. But he would be cheaper. But we would need playmaking help. Now, this is where RJ and, and um, Julius come in. We know Julius has been playing a lot on the pinch post. You know, spraying the ball out from the pinch post, making been been put in a position to make decisions, playmaking decisions. And he's done pretty good at it this past year, matter of fact. We know that R.J. Barrett is capable of doing that as well, making plays from the wing. Matter of fact, there was some talking about star R.J. Barrett at the point guard. This was, remember, this was like a year ago. Star R.J. Barrett at the point guard. I didn't think that was right, but it just goes to show that he does have the playmaking capability. So if you get a Kendrick Nunn, you're going to be dependent on, you know, RJ as well as Julius to continue to make, to make plays. Kendrick Nunn's a scorer first. And we talked about what a scorer is. He's a scorer. Okay. And he would help us. Put it this way. Either one of these guys would, would, would upgrade the Knicks. Okay. Either one of these guys would upgrade the Knicks. These guys are very crucial to Miami's success in reaching the finals last year. And they're pushed, they would, and I'm really, you know, hats off to, uh, also to Eric Spolster. I mean, he had, uh, Trevor Reese is 36. Andre Iguodala's got to be 34, 35. You, you know, Goran Dragic's 34, you know, and they were, they made the six seed this past season and they were in the finals last year. Okay. Hats off to Eric Spolster. I mean, they, he, whew, that's another guy. I'm glad our guy won the coach of the year, but hats off to Eric Spolster. I mean, he really, does the job. So, um, and they don't have a first round pick this year. Miami does not have a first round pick this year. In fact, they don't have a second round pick this year. They got no picks this year and a rich draft. So I know Riley's going to do something. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what he's going to do. Plus the, the, their strengths, they got Bam out of Bayou. They got Jimmy Butler, who's, you know, 31. Um, those are their guys. And then they got Tyler Harrell. And then they got a bunch of other guys, a bunch of other guys, you know. So they're going to have to re-sign both none to me and Robinson. I would try to push them to make sure they, they sign one for 20, one for 15. Now we ain't got to worry about Miami competing with us for Kyle Lowry. Then that gives us an option with Kyle Lowry. So we have Kyle Lowry, who I think – I still think Kyle Lowry and Colin Sexton are our two best options in terms of free agent point guards. I think those are our two best options. Um, I know with the Colin Sexton deal, we'd have to take on Kevin Love. But what I like about everything we're mentioning here today, everything, we don't have to give up draft picks for anything. If we, for Duncan Robinson, for Kendrick Nunn, that's money. For Kyle Lowry, that's money. And if we're going to take on Kevin Love, they're not, Rose ain't giving up the draft pick. You you asked him to take on thirty one million for the next two years, sixty two million on this guy that's gonna play off the bench for us. So no, we're not giving up no draft picks for Colin Sexton. You know maybe we give him the twenty twenty three Dallas pick. That's it. But we want to keep all our picks this year. See, I'm greedy. I want to keep all my picks this year. Okay, I want all my picks. <laughs> so even if we get Sexton, I still want to get a point guard because you want to pair him in two years with somebody. You say IQ, yeah, cool. IQ is there too. Why not have three? And you got a rotation. I'm greedy, man. I want all of it. Okay, plus we need wings. So let's get some wings, right? So we got an opportunity here to use this, the massive leverage that we have to make sure we're going to get a Kyle Lowry, a, a Kendrick uh, Nunn, Duncan Robinson. And we, you know, so like I said, we could get a Duncan Robinson and still get a Kyle Lowry or a Colin Sexton. We could do that. We can get a Kendrick Nunn. We have even more money. Still do that. 
Now, as far as who we bring him back, I think we need to really bring back Reggie Bullock because let's say we get Duncan Robinson. He's a shooter in the starting lineup. Then you bring on the, off the bench Duncan um, um, Reggie Bullock. He's a shooter coming off the bench. Okay, that's how Miami was reaching the finals last year, this past se- season before. They had Duncan Robinson killing, and then they had Tyler Hero coming off the bench and killing. Well, we would have a very similar situation with the shooter of Reggie Bullock coming off the bench and the starter of Duncan Robinson shooting. You can th- you imagine Duncan Robinson is going to draw attention to him. He's going to constantly draw attention. That's going to just open stuff up for everybody else. Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, whoever the point guard is, it's just going to open up. Mitchell Robinson, it's just going to open up all types of opportunities, makes us that much more dangerous. So that's the plan. I would first go after Duncan Robinson. I would go after him with 18 to 20 million over four years. I know it's a bit of an overpay, not much though, but for a shooter of his level, not much, especially in given the market. The Bertans and Harris got the money they got, and, and Rob Donovich, that's the next, they just set the market. They really did. Bob Donovich got 70, Bertans got 80, and then um, uh, Harris got 75. So you got to figure four years, 72, uh, four years, 80. You know, you got to figure that's the, that's the range. That's the market value now for these guys that can shoot the rock like that. There's not a lot of them. And that's what I'm saying. Last year, really, I think we missed a bit of an opportunity because there were some good shooters on the market last year. If you all remember, um, you know, we were talking about Bogdan. We were talking about Malik Beasley. We were talking about Bertans. I didn't really want Bertans, but all of these shooters and Joe Harris, these shooters were available last year. Um, the Knicks chose not to spend the money. Fine. We got it this year. But guy like Duncan Robinson, you know, <laughs> I think we need to we need to go after him and let Pat Riley, force Pat Riley to match that, force him to match that, okay? And he's going to need a point guard. So uh, he gonna, I think he's going to keep Kendrick Nunn. I think he's going to keep him. He's just not going to have to pay him as much as he's going to have to pay Duncan Robinson. But that oh, even if he matches on both, any offers we make on both players, that locks him up and opens up Kyle Lowry for us. Okay, so this is how you use your leverage. The Knicks got leverage. And we don't got to give up no draft picks for any of that. We keep all our picks. See, we keep all our picks. Now, is there a wing that's a superstar that will require our picks? There's only a couple of those. And and they're not really available. Like, we're talking about a Kawhi Leonard. That's that's the type of guy you're giving up picks for. You know, a Kawhi, a top five, at least top ten NBA player. So you're talking about a Kawhi Leonard. Um, you know, I don't know anyone else that I would be giving up two of my picks. And there's, you know, we talked about Boat Night. I got respect for Boat Night, but I'm not as high on him as some of y'all are. I'm not buying the hype. He's too injury prone. He's going to need a couple of, couple of years to develop. Um, yeah, I'm not buying it. I'm sorry. Um, uh, he's a, he's a shooter and a scorer, uh, from the shooting guard's position, but he's going to need a couple of years development. He's not going to be ready to come right in and, and contribute. I don't think right away. So there's not that many wings that's out here. You know, we talked about Zach Levine and he's not on the market, right? Um, I don't see that many wings out here that, that, you know, that we could, that that's, that's worth us trading picks for. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I don't see him. Brandon Ingram is not on the market, and I wouldn't want him anyway. Um, DeJounte Murray is not really a wing. I don't think San Antonio is letting him go anywhere. I'm just looking over the landscape. I don't see nothing. P.J. Warren from Indiana. I like P.J. Warren, but I'm not giving up draft picks. You know what I'm saying? The only guy I'm giving up draft picks for is Kawhi. Somebody said, well, what about Miles Turner? Listen, if I got to give up Mitchell Robinson, that's your prize right there. I'm not giving up no draft picks. That's your prize right there. Cause I like Mitchell Robinson. Okay. So I don't see no wings out here, uh, that I'm willing to give up a whole bunch of draft picks to get. I just don't see it. I'm trying to find one. Not, I don't see it. Maybe Pascal Siakam. I don't know. If you're talking about Pascal Siakam now. Hmm. That's interesting. I know he had, there's some internal strife with Pascal in Toronto last year. That was, they actually, you know, suspended him a game or two last year because of fighting and all that. I don't know what's going on, but that's a guy I would say 
I would give up a draft pick for him. I would give up a first uh, for Pascal Siakam. Just one. I'm not giving up all my first. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's it, though. Somebody say, what about Jalen Brown? To me, R.J. Barrett is Jalen Brown. He's just a year or two behind Jalen Brown, both in age and in status. So I don't I, no. No. Jason Tatum? Oh, you could have both draft picks for Jason Tatum. But the Celtics are not stupid. They're not letting Jason Tatum go. So he's not available. So I mean, really, you know, as far as wings, we don't we can get wings. We're still talking about Powell, Duncan Robinson. Um, and you're talking about um Kelly Uber. And you ain't got to give up no picks for any of them. Okay? As far as point guards, you, you know, you're talking about really that's available now. Now, if Shea Gilgis Alexander came to us in the trade, that's a whole different game. But officially, let's go talk officially. He's not available, right? Who is available? Kyle Lowry's available. Okay. Kyle Lowry's available. Vontae Graham's available. Kendrick Nunn's available. Okay. These are guys that are available. Okay. So you got real point guards that's available that you could go get that you ain't got to pay, do nothing but pay money. Pay money to. That's what you're dealing with. You're not dealing with draft picks in any of these cases. You're not dealing with draft picks. Even a Malcolm Brogdon, who, you know, I'm high on him as a player, but he's hurt too much. I don't understand why people want to ignore the fact that this cat spends most of his time in street clothes. That drives me crazy. I hate the fact that we, my team would be depending on somebody and we're paying them millions of dollars and they're always on the, on the sideline clapping in their street clothes. I need them on the court. And this is one of them brothers that would drive me crazy like that. So I, I'm not really that high on him as far as that. Because he that he has a lot of ability, but he's lacking availability. That's the problem. That's the problem. So I don't see there's nobody out here that we got to be giving up picks for. Everybody's money. So there's no reason. And there's nobody in this draft except to me, like I said, Suggs, Cunningham, and and uh and the kid from Florida State, Leonard Hamilton's boy, um uh Barnes. Those are the only ones I would try to move up to get. I'm not moving up to get anybody else. I like Moses Moody, but you know what? I like I like Trey Murphy the third too. I'll take him just as quick. Chris Duarte just as quick. Ain't nobody up there I need to move up to get like that. No. We can get good players right where we are. And like I said, there's so many guards out here. This is the this is the season to get a point guard. We got to get one this year. This is this is the season for it right here. We've been waiting for this for a couple of years. So I wouldn't be trading my picks. You know, Davion Mitchell, yeah, I like Davion Mitchell. But you know what? Jared Butler, I could get him just as well. I can get him just as good. I like McBride just as good. I like McBride, Davion Mitchell just as uh just as good as Davion Mitchell. I haven't done Trey Mann yet. We're gonna talk about him, but he's available too. There's too many guys out here. Butler. Mitchell, Ayo DeSumo, we, there's a, too many guys. You, we got to get one of them. And so I don't think we're going to miss the boat on this. So we're in a good position here to force Miami's hand and eliminate our competition for Kyle Lowry if we wanted him. And I really do want Kyle Lowry. I'm really favoring him. I'm really favoring Kyle Lowry. I know everybody on the how Alonzo Ball trip, and I'm not saying Alonzo Ball ain't no scrub. He's, he will help us. But honestly, to me, the guards I just mentioned in the draft, Ayu DeSumo, Jared Butler, Trey May, Sharif Cooper, and of course, Miles McBride. They're all going to be better than Lonzo Ball. Right. I see. They're all going to be. The only question mark among them might be DeSumo. Maybe. I'll give you that. But them other cats and then Jaden Springer. And two, they're all going to be better than Lonzo Ball. So I'm not worried about Lonzo Ball. I'm not. Meantime, while they're developing on our team, one of them, we can be pushing forward with a guy right now that can be pushing us towards each conference final. That's what I'm talking about. And all it's costing us is money. And only for two years. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? That's what we're talking about. You know, I mean, I'm not, like I said, I ain't saying Lonzo Ball's no scrub. It ain't no either or. But I'm saying we got better options. And definitely we ain't paying that boy no 80 million. No. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. 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 I'd rather have Kyle Lowry. Give me Kyle Lowry right now. Give me Colin Sexton. He's a dog, man. We want dogs. Give me a dog. 
somebody that's going that's gonna stand out in Madison Square Garden and turn it out, baby. That's what I'm talking about. So, yes, let's push for old Duncan Robinson and call cause old old Sly Fox Pat Riley to have to make some moves. That's what I'm saying. We got the leverage. The Don got the leverage. So that's what I'm saying. So we can opt. We could, it, you know what? And the game could come to us. Like we could push on Robinson. If he, if he don't bite, we get Robinson. We could push on none. If we don't get Lowry, if he don't bite, we could get none. We could get Sexton. They want Cleveland. Don't, don't buy the hype. Listen, Cleveland going to move on from Colin Sexton. Not because Colin Sexton stink, because they got Darius Garland and they need to get rid to accelerate their rebuild, they need to get rid of Kevin Love. They need Kevin Love off their books. And ain't but one team in the NBA that could take him on. Guess who that is? There you go. And we ain't got to give up no draft picks. Some of you are we ain't giving up sex with our draft picks. Now, if you want to get rid of Kevin Love, you will. <laughs> Tell you what, we'll give you the 2023 20, seconds <laughs> because y'all want to get rid of Kevin Love. We might want some picks from y'all. Shoot, we in the driver's seat, y'all. We in the driver's seat. We in the position of power. They got to come to the Don and the Don waiting for them. Have a good Tuesday. Shalom.